Last episode, we'd left Puerto Madero for Costa Rica, but had some engine problems along the way that led to a hard decision. So we want to get dirty back. All right, I'm in the back room, about to drain some diesel out of the tank because it's super full and uh, start doing some troubleshooting. Um, before I did that though, I thought I would just quickly run through the troubleshooting I did at sea. I'm not gonna go into a great deal of detail, but essentially I attempted bypassing the um, electric diesel pump. I attempted bypassing the diesel tank. I attempted bypassing the rake or filter and all three of those things bypassing just one, I wasn't able to get fuel lift into the engine. That made me think that essentially I wasn't coming across the problem easily. Um, and so the dis I basically made the decision to um, go straight to that jerry can. So at least we had the use of the motor if we needed it um, and come back to port so that we could troubleshoot further. Um, I understand some people would have done more troubleshooting at sea, but we were only 30 miles from port. We have a brand new engine that only had 14 hours on it. So although we were fairly sure it was a fuel related problem, we had no guarantee it was a fuel related problem. Um, you know, this engine has only been tested so much. Um, the engine's still under warranty. So we really didn't, if there was something else going on, we really didn't want to push that and then have, you know, not, not be able to make claims and we had 300 miles to go so one running out of a jerry can we, we couldn't do that for that far we don't have enough fuel in the jerry cans i couldn't get the fuel out of the fuel tank because the fuel tank was so um so full which is good but the only way to get the fuel out is to take the lid off and we would have just sloshed fuel through the entire boat because there was such um big swell that as soon as i took the lid off fuel would have come flying out of the um thing so we couldn't get fuel out of it into the jerry cans um, yeah, basically it just felt like the smarter decision to turn back at that point since we were only 30 miles away. We knew we could sail back easily if we had to, if we couldn't get the engine going again. Um, I did check for blockages. I did check for air, obvious air leaks. I did that by essentially taking apart like, you know, a piece of each of the system and blowing into it. So I was able to blow, for example, directly into the fuel tank. So I knew that wasn't block it, blocked. I was able to, for example, blow through the air vent into the diesel tank so i knew the air vent wasn't blocked um i also then was essentially blowing into like a disconnected hose covering the other end with my finger to check for air leaks um, and like i said i tried to bypass each system and wasn't getting an obvious answer as to which part of the system was the cause of the problem um so yeah we're going to start troubleshooting again today my plan is to drain a little bit of diesel out of the tank because it's super full right now which will just make it hard to do work in the tank First thing I want to check is I'm going to blow into the pipe going into the diesel tank while covering the end of the aluminium pipe that goes into the diesel tank because I have one concern I had was maybe air is getting in through that because it could have some corrosion. Um, so I want to really check that no air leaks out when I do that. Um, once I do that, I'm then going to reconnect the whole system back together and just see if it's like magically working again, because that does happen, in which case we won't know what the problem was, but we can at least then, you know, continue troubleshooting just to know and then essentially go through each system again and try and identify where the problem might have been. Um, yeah, so first step, drain in the fuel tank and then, um, and then, yeah, seeing if there's any weird leaks in the aluminium. One thing with our fuel tank is that they, there is piping going to it that is aluminium uh, in, te in an integral you know, tube. And so if there's a problem with those tubes, it's pretty much impossible to check um, out at sea when you've got one person driving the boat, another down here trying to like blow in things while holding another thing. So yeah, so that's Glenn. All right, I managed to drain. <laughs> I managed to drain um, like four gallons out, so at least it's not right at the top now. Um, and I'm gonna have to put my hand in the diesel tank, in the diesel, to do some of the tests I would like to do and to feel the rods and everything. 
Um, the good news is they look really good. They don't look corroded at all. So I think they're probably okay. I did kind of check them when the tank was empty, but I didn't like blow into them or do anything. So what I'm gonna do, a little trick from my university days of um, cow pregnancy testing, is I'm gonna put this on my hand and then go in. Diesel will degrade this very quickly. As anybody who's worked with diesel will know, it will go through the plastic kind of quick, but um, yeah, I'm gonna try and do that really quickly so I don't get diesel off my entire arm. Okay, that's a good sign. That's all coming out okay. blockage. I mean no air leaking. Alright, I now know there are no um, air leaks between the pipe and the tank um, and I also kind of know now that that hose clamp is tight enough too that connects just here into the tank um, because that would have leaked too so that's good. Put the lid back on and then start troubleshooting the other side of the system. We continued to run various checks, including disconnecting and reconnecting fuel lines, tightening hose clamps and connections, and doing tests on the diesel pump. The diesel pump gave us some strange results, as at first it wasn't working, and then with a cup of fuel held up directly next to it, it started working again. All right, you can turn it off. But it is working? Yeah. We were running the engine with all of the connections exactly the same as they had been at sea. After our six hours running the engine at the dock, nothing's happened. So next step is a very fun motoring journey out, uh, out in the swell, I guess for around eight hours. And if it keeps working, great. So. I'm about to bypass our fuel pump. Uh, we've pretty much narrowed it down to either being a problem with this little guy, external fuel pump, or an intermittent blockage in the tank, which could be happening if there's a rubber gasket, it doesn't always line up perfectly um, with the holes because it shrinks, the rubber shrinks and expands. And then we figured when we're um, screwing in the screws to hold the lid down on the tank lid, that rubber gasket could get a little bit sheared off and then there's a little bit of floaty rubber could be causing a blockage. The tank is clean though, it's very clean. We can't see it, but that's, you know, it's a big tank, so it's a possibility. Um, it is now 10 days after we tried leaving and you may be able to tell from my voice that we've spent the last seven days sick, which is a real pain. Don't know where we got it. We must've picked it up before we even left, I guess, because um, we did that field troubleshooting that you saw and then um, the next day we both woke up with a little sore throat and we're like, oh, it's weird. Maybe like, you know, smelling all that diesel, sleeping with the fan on, you know, got our throats a bit sore. And then within a few hours we had fevers, sneezing, coughs. Um, yeah, we've been pretty sick. So the last seven days has really just been like <laughs> laying around in 34 degree heat trying to feel better. Uh, you might be able to hear it in my voice, I'm still a little croaky. Um, today's the first day we felt good enough to kind of start tackling some jobs. Jim's still a bit sicker, he, he hit, got hit even harder than me, um, so he's still feeling a bit icky today but is helping a friend go up their mast um, while I have a look at this fuel pump. So basically we're just going to bypass it. Plenty of people just don't even use um, these fuel pumps with this type of engine. It just means you manually bleed the air using the little pump on the engine. It's really not that hard. So that's what we're gonna do for now. Eventually we may look at doing some sort of valve system so we can have the access to an electric fuel pump if we want it. Um, but yeah, for now, we're just gonna bypass it. And then we'll be doing a eight hour test motoring up and down the coast within towing and radio distance of the marina 
to confirm that it was likely the pump or at the very least an intermittent blockage that is unlikely to recur with great frequency. So um, that's the plan, build some confidence back up in the engine in Tufed. Um, and yeah, we've really just been like waiting to feel good enough to do this. And of course that means we're now 10 days delayed. Today is March 15th, which on the National Hurricane Center advisory thing is the day hurricane season starts in Mexico. Cool. Anyway, I'm gonna see if I can bypass this fuel filter. I mean, this uh, fuel pump. We had another job on our list, trimming the nails of a sweet sailing dog. Hey big fella, are we going to cut your nails? Are you ready? It'd be good to get them cut. Hey. Okay. Although a nail trim sounds like an easy task, with a 90 pound dog it can prove quite difficult. Okay. After a few attempts with Capone getting more and more stressed, we decided it was time to take a different approach. So about half an hour ago I gave our big friend a dose of sedative. Um, so he's hopefully sleeping right now. We're going to go do his nails while he's asleep. In a lot of dogs, it's better to do this, especially if you have a veterinarian able to supervise, rather than like pin them down and try and cut their nails and make them really, really stressed. So um, hopefully we can get these nails really, really short and he won't need a nail trim for a long time. You look cute. Do you want to move my hand? That's okay. Oh, he's a sleepy boy. No. Oh, can I show these ones? Oh, he's very nice. What about this one? Oh, very nice. Capone recovered very well from his nail trim. And with that job done, the next step was a C trial with the diesel pump bypass to see what happens. You'll find out next episode. Patrons get early access to ad-free videos and live updates and make our mission to help animals in need possible. So a big thank you to them. Until next time, stay chuffed everybody.